Welcome back guys. Right now we'll be creating the conftest.py file. Again, this file is what basically joins test infra to our kitchen VM that we'll be creating with, uh, with kitchen salt. Um, there are a few variables that kitchen automatically goes and creates, which is the kitchen host name, username, port, and SSH key. Uh, we'll be creating a SSH config for that with those particular variables. And then with the SSH config, we'll be passing that on to uh, test and for a backend uh, to go ahead. Uh, yeah, test and for a backend to go ahead and pass on to the to the test files that we've already created. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and create the test the conf test file here in the test folder. So let's go ahead and. Python 3, I like to write it in Python 3. Let me set my syntax to Python. Uh, we'll need test infra. Uh, we might need OS, so I'm gonna go ahead and import OS. And I believe that should be it. Uh, we shouldn't need anything else. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and do def host, and we will do uh, request and temp. DIR. Oh, uh, this will be a fixture. So if you don't know about um, fixtures, uh, that's the last thing I need actually. Import PyTest. A fixture is basically we're overriding, uh, we're overriding the source of the test infra host um, method to go ahead and allow us to pass a connection into our, into our kitchen VM. Uh, we will also need to configure the the SSH config file. I'll leave it up here, I guess. That's, oops, SSH config is equal to, uh, we'll do dot SSH config. I've seen this in the internet in the past. It, this, I guess it's just my way of writing it. I don't exactly remember where I saw it. Um, if I do find it, I'll, I'll leave it in the description. So, uh, what we'll do now is that we'll go ahead and create the SSH config file. So SSH config files equal to, uh, we'll do temp dir.join, and then we'll say SSH config there. Um, what, will that, what that will do is that temp dir is actually a, uh, it's actually a parameter passed by the fixture and it will just generate a random temp, temp directory for Python to use. And we're gonna go ahead and create this file into that particular, into that directory. Okay, so now that we've got the file, uh, let's go ahead and write the data. So we need SSH config file dot write. Um, we need to write the host. I don't exactly remember, so I'll have to look at the, uh, the document that I created. I believe the next one was uh, username. And port and the identity file, I believe. And file is three. Okay, so let me uh, let me look at my document here. Yeah, so I've got the hostname, username, port, and SSH key, which is the identity file. Okay, that's great. So let's do dot format. And we'll say that uh, the oh, okay, so kitchen passes the the variables that we've got listed here, which is kitchen hostname, kitchen username, port, and SSH key. So the First one is going to be os.environ, and then it's going to be kitchen on all caps host name, and then it's viron kitchen dot uh, username, and the next one is kitchen dot port, or kitchen underscore port, not dot. And the last one is uh, the identity file. So that is 
Close that. Oops. Uh, OS dot environ. Kitchen SSH key, I believe. Yep, that's it. Kitchen SSH key. All right, so that goes ahead and sets that up. Uh, what we'll do now is that we need to go ahead and make sure that test infra generates its backends. It doesn't really need to, but I ran into an issue with, with the test I ran earlier. Um, so I go ahead and, and generate the backend just to be safe. So if you run test infra dot backend dot get backends with an S and then local host, uh, this will generate the SSH backend that it needs. Um, not that it needs it anymore because that's an old method, but I generate it just to be safe at this point. And what we want to yield or return, we, you can do return or yield. I prefer yield because it generates a generator, which is exactly what we want. So yield uh, test infra dot get host. And we want to go ahead and specify the paramico uh, slash slash. And then the, it's the user at host. And I don't need the ports, but because that, that's part of the config. So the user at host and SSH config is equal to ssh config file and sudo equal true. Uh, let me, yeah, that should be it. Oh, I actually forgot to hold, put the whole format here. So dot format, this is os dot environ. Uh, the first one we said was the username. So kitchen, underscore username. And then the next one is os.environ kitchen, and it is the host name. That should be that. Um, don't believe, let me go ahead and save this real quickly. So conf test.py. I don't believe I need anything else. That should be good. I've got my paramico colon slash slash. I've got my config test and we should be good to go. So now that I've got that saved, uh, on the next video, what we're going to do is that actually, uh, let me double check this really quick. Uh, it's a good thing I did double check it actually. Um, one, don't have these spaces here after the new lines, uh, that indents it one space over, which is actually uh, very, very problematic. Uh, you need the one after the variable, of course, so just the new lines. Uh, two, the, it's not username, it's just user. So that will go ahead and fix that as well. Um, so, on the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and modify our kitchen YAML files. And when we modify the kitchen yellow file, there's going to be a few ways we can do it. And I'm just going to go with the best way I think is possible. You're more than welcome to go with another way if you want to. Um, but I'm going to, I'm always going to go ahead and segregate them. So as I said before, I'm going to leave the default ones that aren't specific to a particular type of host, like for example, web or application or whatever. Uh, I'm going to put them in default and then they're also going to be in suite default and they're going to be tested under suite default. And they're going to, they're not going to, they shouldn't require anything from any other suite to function. So make sure that they're completely independent of each other. And that way you don't run into any issues in the future where you, you have something that's supposed to be default, but it needs something from web or, or application. Make sure it stays independent. All right. So on the, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.